Good evening and welcome to a long overdue Hackology. Tonight's episode we're going to be looking at a program or a script written in Python called Ubercrypt. Uh, basically, uh, when all the Snowden NSA stuff first was going on, um, everybody was talking about encryption and how to uh, better protect their information. So me and my friends, we were just talking through some theory um, and basically saying, the existing encryption algorithms that we have, couldn't we create a multi-layer algorithm that instead of uh, just encrypting something once with a relatively simple key, could take something and encrypt it many, 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 many times with a really complex key. Now, um, we talked about this for a while and then I decided, right, that's it. I've got to test it, I've got to see if it works. So I wrote some script in Python um, really sketchy, got it working, and over the prep, um, you know, progressed over a few nights, and basically um, came up with this thing called Ubercrypt. And basically, I'm going to talk to you about usage first, and um, then I'll explain how the script works and exactly what it's doing, and how it's programmed. So uh, you'll need to copy the archive down from Git. I will put a link in the notes and um, you then need to go into the directory where the script is chmod plus x the python script and then to call it you need to run python space the name of the script and also you will need additionally to python you'll need the pycrypto libraries so that's sudo app get install py dash crypto once you've done all that and you're sitting in the directory this is how you use the script. So initially, you're going to run Python crypto.py space dash g, and I think the default amount of keys is probably, I don't know, 512, 1024 or something. If you want to do 4096 keys, it's completely up to you. If you want to use 50,000 keys, it's completely up to you. It works, it's tested. So first thing we're going to do is call Python crypto.py dash g, 4096, so we're going to make a key that has 4096 layers, so there will be 4096 keys contained within one key. And this is using AES CBC encryption, I think it's CBC, um, but uh, that, that's how it's written. The script is designed to be added to, that's why I'm going to explain what's going on later. So. Uh, if you run the G, you'll see the, screen, the, the key is output to the screen and you can um, you can see what the key looks like. Then to encode something we're going to run python uh, crypto.py dash e and in quotes, double quotes, we're going to put hack the planet and press enter. Then what the script will do is output an encrypted string. It starts with ENC, that's just a prefix, so I know that, the, or the, at least the program knows that it's the correct type of string that it's looking for to be passed in when it's decrypting things. So it's prefixed with ENC, and the rest of the numbers are the string that's been encrypted using the uber long key. So what we can do now is we can copy this string, so the ENC with all the numbers, and we can copy and we can paste this into Python, Python, crypto.py, dash d for decode. You press, ooh, I spot Python wrong. If you press enter, the script will then present you the decoded string. It will also tell you how big the key was it used to um, decode the message. And that's just the basic usage because of the way that this works, it's a command line tool, you can script it, you can put it into your applications, you could use this for various different things. I've got some really cool ideas for the pineapple and microcomputers for in encrypting things, but uh, only keeping them encrypted for a certain amount of time, So, like, um, or keeping them unencrypted for a certain amount of time. So basically, you gather files, and as you gather files, at some point you're just going to want to archive loads of that stuff in a particular folder or whatever, you put the key in with the the key that's generated using the script. The script then looks at that USB key, goes, oh, there's a key present, and automatically archives all that data into some kind of encrypted file format. But 
at the moment. It's not at that kind of stage and it's not ready for file streams and things like that. I need to sit down and program a little bit more, but I thought I'd show you what I've got so far. So, next part of the video, let's look at code. Okay, the code. What is going on with the code? I have no idea because it's been about, I think, three months since I wrote this. So what I'm going to do is pull it up on GitHub and go through it with you. Okay, so pycrypto.py. What is it? How does it work? Well, you can see we've got the uh, import OS, import binary ASCII, which is for converting binary to ASCII, and vice versa. Uh, we've got import string, we've got import random, we've got import sys. So random is the random number generator, string is the string library for Python. Sys is the system um, thing to allow you to delete files and add files, which is what you should use because it's better for cross compatibility. So uh, use sys, don't use things like exec rm and uh, call in OS specific things. That's why you use Python, so it's easier to deploy across other operating systems. Anyway. Uh, also, we've got the uh, import from crypto.cypher, the import the AES library. So AES is what we're using and um, that's what the script's designed to work with. So you've got a function that basically will generate IVs. It will also generate um, keys. So you can basically create a, an IV um, array and a key array and that's what the functions func gen IV, func gen keys. So basically, uh, one creates the key, one creates the IVs. So they're both specific. One has only got to have so many characters in, and the other key has to have another certain amount of characters in, i.e., 32 and 12 or 10 or something like that, um, from what I can remember. Okay, so we have the encrypt AES that um, will basically take one part of the key and one, I, one IV and your message or the previous um, encryption level and then it will encrypt it again and you've got the decrypt AES which also does the same so it takes the key and the, the message and it decrypts them but it works in an array so it, it loops through the key and does each layer individually and we've got funk decrypt layers which will decrypt um, each uh, layer of encryption within the um, within the key file. We've got save keys, which will write the key list to um, the files, which is called when we run the tac g. Uh, we've got a function to load the keys. So basically, that will look at the key file, and it will load the keys into memory. And um, we've got another function to load IVs, which is a little bit messy, but it works. Um, so we load all the IVs into an array as well. That means that the program can access them really quickly rather than having to go and read them from a file stream each time. Uh, we've got char to bytes. So basically what that will do is take an ASCII character and convert it into um, bytes. So basically it will return you a number of that ASCII um, character and then we use that for the encryption. Uh, we've got func... Uh, oh, no. The reason we use ASCII, um, the reason we use charter bytes, is because when the message is output to the um, shell, if we left it as an um, ASCII characters rather than converting it into a number, <laughs> some characters uh, just don't display. They're really, really weird characters, like kind of crazy ones that you'd see if you opened up a, a binary in Notepad or. Or something like that. Um, so what I do is uh, when the encryption's finished and just before it starts, quickly switch the um, numerics um, into ASCII characters or vice versa, the ASCII into numerics because, uh, <laughs> trust me, copying and pasting those weird ASCII characters back in to try and decrypt stuff does not work. <laughs> so. Um, We've got the, uh, a function called generate key file. This generates the key file that outputs the keys into a text file and saves them for you. Um, that's what you need to share if you want to, uh, if you wanted to share information with somebody and pass an encrypted file to them. What you want to do is offline, give them the key on a USB stick, and then basically any information that you sent using your key, they would then be able to decrypt the other end using that key. Um, 
so uh, funk display help that's pretty self-explanatory that will display the help screen um, if you just call the script python space crypto.py um, you will be presented with a help screen anyway so I suggest just go and read the help see what it's all about it's pretty self-explanatory how it works and um, then below there are the main program calls which is basically the structure and the order but all the other functions get put together to encrypt and decrypt the data. I mean, I, I could go through this with you. It's fairly self-explanatory. There's all the global variables for storing the information in, like how long the key is, the array for the keys, the array for the IVs, what the program is doing, what action it should take. Is it encrypting? Is it decrypting? Is it displaying the help? Um, or is it displaying the key list? So uh, it will also count and check the keys um, and it will pad the messages out, it's really important that the messages are padded out at the end. Um, it also checks to see that there's a key file present. Uh, if there's no key file present, it will display a message and tell you that you need to generate a key file. Um, it also looks at the key file. Um, counts how many keys are in there and then figures out how many IVs there are and how many um, actual keys there are and then splits those out into the two arrays. And then the perform action is basically uh, passes it into encrypt layer or decrypt layers which goes through all the keys and performs the decryption process and the encrypt layers which passes the text string in there and uh, goes through all the layers of the keys and encrypts the message string. Uh, if it gets the key list one, it just displays the uh, key to the um, console. And the reason for doing this is so that you guys could pipe it into another text file to be able to copy onto the USB to send to somebody else. So, <laughs> that's been Ubercrypt for Python. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed tonight's episode of Hackology. We should be back very, very soon. And uh, we've got some brilliant things coming up. I mean, some really cool stuff, uh, but not going to divulge any of that information. So, have fun hacking. Um, this has been Hackology, and we'll be back really soon. Peace.